He's turn he's a turned around boy. Hi everyone, turn the knee round Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd. And it's time for a review of this new Justin Timberlake album, Everything I Thought It Was. Justin Timberlake, a man. A name who really needs no introduction at this point, does he? He is easily one of the biggest and most celebrated American pop stars of the modern era, from his years as a standout member of the boy band NSYNC to his successful transition into a solo career uh, during the early and mid 2000s, which led to Crimea River Justin, Sexy Back Justin, and I feel like this music from Justin represents an image of him that's a little frozen in time because his subsequent eras as an artist haven't been quite as definitive. I mean, absolutely for sure he tried on the 2020 experience back in 2013, and I think Suit and Tie Justin does certainly make sense as a concept and attempt at something more mature and glamorous, especially considering the time that he was at in his career. And furthermore, I think tracks like Mirrors have certainly withstood the test of time, but I still think some of the deep cuts on this album are kind of weak, plus uh, the production from Timbaland is massively overrated and does not nearly sound as grand and full as it should, especially considering what the record is going for. While the 2020 experience certainly could have been a better project, what uh, continues to throw me for a loop is just how much of a downgrade we were given from there on Justin's next LP, Man of the Woods, which saw him making attempts at like doing some country pop and singer-songwriter stuff too, but yet uh, he wasn't fully committing to that bit for most of the record. It was really such a disappointment that I hoped uh, Justin was just going to leave that man in those woods and we would move on to something more exciting and interesting on this new LP here. Going into this record, my hopes weren't exactly high, especially given the singles. There was Selfish and also the song Drown was released as a teaser too. The former features this little drum machine beat as well as some very meek synth passages. Instrumentally, it's very one dimensional, kind of sounds like a demo, which is disappointing considering how good the song at the core of the track is. Then the latter of these two tracks is just about every groove melodramatic, millennial pop anthem cliche compiled into one four-minute chore of a song. And it's off these two tracks that I really have no idea what Justin could possibly be going for on this album, outside of maybe just playing it as safe and as uh, predictable as possible, which might just be the sensible approach considering how much Man of the Woods threw fans off. I mean, even the song No Angels feels obligatory in a sense, where it's a disco-tinged dance track where, of course, Justin brings his bad boy sexy side. Cause there's no angels here on this dance floor. And yeah, as a little dance pop track that's uh, just a wee bit horny, it's passable. It's fine. So yeah, didn't go into this record expecting many, if any, surprises. But actually, there are some moments where Justin uh, does go outside of his comfort zone. And I was not only surprised about that, but just also at how long this record is at 18 tracks and 80 minutes of runtime, as Justin is giving himself very few boundaries to work with and just giving us a buffet of different tracks and vibes. There are songs that see Justin in his sexy club jam bag. Songs that see him trying genres he really has no business doing. Some songs see Justin drowning in these corny, flirty one-liners that are only sexy in his head, and some songs just don't really know when to end, as a lot of tracks have instrumental extensions, bridges, instrumental switch-ups. Turns out Justin is bringing sexy back and structure too. Look, let's just start with the opener on this thing, which you made us wait six years only for you to kick your new record off with a Drake song, with its moody and low-key beat and comatose R&B tinged vocal leads. That's literally what it is. I mean, it's not a bad Drake song, mind you, but it is still a Drake song. That, for Justin, just reads as very performative and self-obsessed, as if Memphis is really that desperate for you to, like, put the city on or something. <laughs> Plus, let's also not forget, I lost my voice like a pastor faster than a Harlem shimmy. But I guess that's what you get for trying to make heartbreak pretty. Come on. What? Are you gonna say anything? Interject? You know, I'm not your performing monkey, Annie. I'm my own man. 
Fine, whatever. Uh, thankfully, Justin turns the heat up on the following track, Fucking Up the Disco. The lyrics on the verses may be trying too hard to come across as slick, but the groove's still going. As a dance track, it kind of washes every other song on the record in this style, especially with its soaring pre-chorus vocal harmonies and nocturnal synth bass licks. The funky and sexual vibes continue on to the following track, Play, where Justin is getting a bit more braggadocious and flamboyant. He's giving us a bit of synth funk bravado in the same way that uh, Bruno Mars does on his stuff. I just want to be sipping all day past that bougie rosé. The chorus layers are a bit heavy handed around the hook where Justin's like doing these weird frustrated descending lines Play! that sound weirdly uncomfortable for him to sing. But the track is mostly fine. That is until the very end where uh, again, he's trying to be sexy, but he's coming across as just painfully unsexy, saying, now I'm gonna give you something to play with. Uh, go ahead and play with it. <laughs> what, what, what am I supposed to envision while listening to this? I don't know, just slapping it around? Like, what? Yeah, this track is obnoxious, but somehow not nearly as obnoxious as the following track, Technicolor, which lasts seven minutes. Has no business doing that. I'm not even sure how to fully break this one down. But yeah, this track as well feels kind of like Justin is playing catch up with a long, trending musical vibe and style. A moody, spacey, R&B, trap, fusion, sex jam with multiple phases. And while Justin certainly does bring some vocal acrobatics to the song, aesthetically, the whole thing sounds so hollow and chilly and stiff. Really the musical equivalent to getting naked while it's uh, below freezing outside. The song Liar sees Justin trying his hand at doing a bit of an Afro beats thing, and the track overall is not too bad, really kind of fits in line with a lot of the major hits in the style these days. The only major shortcoming is Justin's tact uh, in regards to his pen game when he says lines like, uh, come on over, help me mess up this bed, don't act like you don't know what I meant. Even if these lines aren't directly connected, uh, we know what you're talking about. We know what you mean, Justin. You're not exactly subtle about what you want on the songs on this record, any of them. Meanwhile, on Infinity Sex, Justin begins to paint himself into a corner, really going back to that future sex love sounds era with some quirky disco funk fusion that has a strong bass line and lyrics that read more like a disorienting fever dream than a sexual romp. Then with Love and War, it feels like Justin is very much again trying to recapture the success of a past ballad like Mirrors. It's an emotional song of devotion that has a lot of falsettos, but what's making it fall short and feel awkward is that the lyrics and uh, themes of the track just read as sort of toxic, as it misconstrues fighting for someone with fighting with them. We're just fighting so much because we're in love, okay? And if you think that's a hot mess, uh, try the track Sanctified, which is really a non-starter for me. It's like this trap gospel fusion where Justin's vocals are super muddy, uh, laid out with distortion and fuzz. They sound horrendous, especially with Justin vocally like hooting and hollering like he's a pastor in a church. It, ugh. Chugging along, my favorite drug is thematically a bit on the nose. And again, another show that Justin is kind of running out of ideas stylistically, but uh, honestly, I don't blame him for dropping more disco sex funk jams because he doesn't sound better doing anything else. This really is like his strongest move. And shout out to Cool and the Gang, who uh, he most definitely pays homage to on the a little bass breakdown bridge uh, on this track. It's giving jungle boogie. I'll stop here for a moment though and say, I feel like this track exemplifies maybe the album's only major recurring theme, and that's just a very cliche and obvious metaphors for love and sex. Our love is like a flame, which Justin likens it to on the song Flame, which uh, musically is kind of like him doing just a very bad Shakira impression. Our sex is like a drug. Our love is like religion. Our sex is like technicolor. Our love is like drowning. Our sex is like play. Our love is like a battle, which, yeah, gets kind of tiresome after a while, as does the record's length, because I feel like in the last leg we're really padding things out. There are already several other tracks on the record that scratch much the same itches that Imagination does, but better, why is it here? The song What Lovers Do, in a word, is mild, just simply mild. There is Selfish, uh, then there's the track Alone, where Justin's like uh, trying to do a sad boy ballad, really whipping out the weeping violin, please. 
please spare me. And then I guess in an attempt to keep things interesting on the back end, we have the song Paradise featuring in sync, but the results are generic and horrendous. This is like the kind of pop pap ballad sludge uh, that gets created at bad writers camps. No wonder AI is taking over. Thematically, the closing track on the record does deliver an idea worth pondering, even if it's not one of my favorite tracks here, with Justin asking, if the circumstances were different, if the life that we lead uh, was not quite so cushy, would you still love me? Which I suppose is as good a note to end on as any. Though I will say this narrative, this introspective moment doesn't hit quite as hard after such a bloated uh, track list that I really wish was whittled down to its best moments. But even with that being said, the highs on this album are not even that high, and mostly just see Justin kind of dabbling in past successes. So I'll say this, while I don't think this is Justin's worst record yet, it is certainly proof that the Timberlake tank is currently running on fumes. Feeling a light four on this one. Transition, have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is a Another video you can check out. Hit that up or a link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Justin Timberlake, forever.